This was another YouTube question, and it came in from Freddie Cortez. Hi, Freddie. I hope you're watching. And uh, if you are, feel free to comment and uh, let us know if we're getting it right, getting getting the answer, getting the answer to the right question for you. But Freddie says, I've had a herniated disc for a year now. I'm 18. Dang, I'm sorry. You're too young for this, buddy. Although uh, annular tears do happen quite a bit in people who are 18. I'm 18 and the numbness and tingling went away, but I still suffer from, from a lot of back pain. What do I do? Great question. Um, now, this doesn't come up that often. So when I... When I hear this question, I really, really want to answer it carefully because if you do have it, it can be frustrating. This back pain due to an annular tear, a torn disc, is basically, if you take everybody with back pain, 100 people with back pain, four of them have discogenic low back pain, pain that's coming from an annular tear. And take a look at that picture in, on that screen. Let's go back to the screen for a second. So this, remember, is a disc, right? It's got that tough outer part and then the soft inner part. And this is a tear in the disc. This is called an annular tear. This, this, I don't like to get into all the fancy names, but this is called the annulus fibrosis. And see how those fibers, you can kind of imagine that, right? Annulus fibrosis. This guy's called the nucleus pulposus because it's pulpy, not gonna affect us. But here's a tear in the fibers and it comes out here and then it goes this way. Now it doesn't go all the way through, right? Part of that annulus is still intact. So it's the tear goes most of the way through in this guy, and it could go all the way through in, in some other lady, in some other person. But this one is contained. So this nuclear material here can't get through this tear because it's not all the way through. It's a partial tear. If you have a partial tear and the soft nuclear material bulges out, that's called a bulging disc. If you have a complete tear and the nuclear material, the soft nuclear material goes all the way out, that's called a herniated disc. If you have a tear and you have a herniated disc, you can get inflammation of the nerve root and that is the lightning-like pain that shoots down your leg. It's like electricity in your leg. So I actually always call it electricity, electricity. I'm not making fun of you, but that's what it is. It's electricity in your leg, electricity. That pain is mostly in the leg. It feels like lightning or electricity, and it's associated with numbness or weakness. The pain from that annular tear, that's a totally different thing. That is in the back. Now, it's not gonna go down the leg because the pain from the tear in the disc is in the disc. So that pain, it feels like a knife in the back. It's in the midline. It's actually very surprising. It's one of the only pains that is worse when you're sitting down. Why? Because when you sit down or, or flex forward, you increase the pressure in your disc and that makes that pain worse. So if you were thinking to yourself, hmm, do I have spinal stenosis with neurogenic claudication or do I have uh, discogenic low back pain? Well, it, then sit down and bend forward. If that relieves your pain, you have spinal stenosis. If that makes your pain worse, you have discogenic low back pain. You can also, if you're wondering, hey, is my pain coming from a tear in my annulus or is it coming from my arthritic facet joints? Well, if the pain is a knife in the back, that is a discogenic annular tear pain. If the pain is off to the side, feels like it's in your hip, burns, goes into your butt and burns in your outer thigh, that's pain from arthritis. That's different. So that's how you know. You can't be certain. And uh, sometimes your MRI will show both, but you have to kind of figure out based on the character of the pain, what's causing the pain. You have to guess based on the character of the pain, what is causing the pain in your low back. And it's super important. You got to tune into this. You know, I've, I've, again, I think I've told you, I've, I had the honor and the privilege in my career of dealing with about 20,000 people with spine problems and brain problems, but, but a lot of them had spine problems. And of those 20,000 people, a lot of them had this discogenic pain. A lot of them though, uh, and I would say nearly all of them, when they first came in, they didn't know what kind of pain they had. They didn't know 
what kind of pain they had. And I got to tell you right now, that's the person who doesn't know whether they should call the plumber or the electrician. You, you cannot get, you know, if your drain is clogged in your toilet and you call the electrician, he's going to look at, they're going to look at you and be like, why'd you call me? <laughs> Are they going to charge you? Yeah. Because they took their time and came out. Uh, did they ever have the possibility of helping you? Nope. They did not. You called the wrong person, people. You called the wrong helper. It's the same thing here. If you have an annular tear, and that's the cause, if you have discogenic low back pain, you really need, you go see your primary care doctor, there's nothing they can do for you. If you go see a chiropractor, there's nothing they can do for you. If you go see a, um, a physiatrist, a rehab doctor, there's nothing they can do for you. If you go see a physical therapist, there's nothing they can do for you. Who do you need to go see for this problem? You need to go see a surgeon or you need to go see a pain management doctor who's subspecialty certified in pain management. So there's only two people out of those six who can help you. Don't go to the, don't call the plumber for an electrical problem. Don't call the electrician for a plumbing problem. You got to know what it is. Now, how do you know who to call? It depends on the kind of pain, right? It doesn't even, well, you say, okay, I had an MRI. Why can't my primary care doctor just send me to the correct specialist? Because it depends on what hurts. The MRI, everyone who has an annular tear goes on to get uh, joint problems that wear out. But if the pain is characteristic of the annular tear, it doesn't make sense to try chiropractic. If the pain is a knife in the back, in the middle, it doesn't make sense to go to the chiropractor. If the pain is off to the side, goes into your butt, feels like it's in your hip and burns on your outer thigh, you bet it makes sense to try chiropractic. Who knows what it feels like? You, you're the only one. Does your primary care doctor know what it feels like? Yeah, maybe if you tell them, right? But only, only because you told them. Now, what about the MRI? Does the MRI or the radiologist, do they know what it feels like? Absolutely not. It, the vast majority of MRIs that show an annular tear also show a facet joint problem. So how do you sort out what's causing your pain? Only you can do that. That's why you're watching this show. You gotta watch this show so that now that you know, now that you know these different types of pain and which can cause which, you can sort it out for yourself you can pick the right doctor, you can get the thing. And if you're sort of like, uh, I think I got it, but I'm not sure, call me. I'll go over it with you. That's what I'm here for. I'd love to look at your MRI and tell you, okay, here's what I see there. Tell me more about, do you have this kind of pain? Do you have that kind of pain? That's what this show is. We can actually go over these things and get to the bottom of it and make sure you get the uh, proper care from the right doctor. All right, well, back to Freddie Cortez. Uh, you know, Freddie wants to know, that's all well and good, uh, Dan, but what do I do? Um, and especially at 18, you know, you're way too young to be dealing with this kind of pain, buddy. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry that it's happening to you. So um, let's uh, look at me. Come over here. So for Freddie Cortez, what you need to be doing is considering your options. And the options for treatment for discogenic low back pain are only two. And they are literally eons apart. The first thing is, how do you confirm it? And uh, that's a little bit controversial. Some people would do a test, called, some doctors would recommend a test called a discogram. Other doctors would say that test is a disco sham. And I would never do it. it so it's it's controversial. I think, you know, my take on it is if it's, an, if it's a test your doctor uses, then they believe it helps them and they're expert in it. If, it, if they think it's a sham, then, you know, don't have one with them. So go with the, go with the you got to uh, dance with the girl that brung you, so to speak. You got to um, play the cards you're dealt. You got to ride the horse you're racing. I don't know. <laughs> There's a bunch of different uh, stupid euphemisms for this, but... Uh, bottom line is, if you've got a doctor who wants to do a discogram, I think it's a very reasonable thing to do. Uh, in some people's hands, it's a great test, and it confirms 
the annular tear is the source of your pain. And then what are your options? What are Freddy Cortez's options for treatment? On one end, since the pain is coming from the disc, if you were to remove the entire disc, you would remove the entire pain. Since the pain is coming from the disc, if you removed the entire disc, you would remove the entire pain. Having said that, once you remove the disc, then what? You can't just remove a disc. A disc is a shock absorber, a disc takes up space. If you remove the entire disc in the lumbar spine, the inner space is gonna collapse. That's gonna screw up the facet joints that hold things together in the back, make them hurt and put a lot of force. So in these days, if you remove an entire disc, most surgeons would recommend doing a fusion, putting a bone in there. And you can do that operation from the front through your belly, if it's the disc between the L5 and the S1. If it's from the back, if it's the disc between the L4 and the L5, most surgeons would recommend you have surgery from the back with pedicle screws. If it's between the L3 and the L4, also from the back, if it's between the L2 and the L3, then that surgery is usually done from the side. So if you gotta remove a disc because it's painful, you can do a fusion and then you're done. You're lock, stock, and barrel, done forever, Freddy Cortez, it'll never hurt again. But you're 18 years old and you now have a lumbar fusion, which means you have a 17% chance of requiring another fusion at an adjacent level within five years. I mean, that may be worth it, right? If you're miserable every day and you're only 18 and this is ridiculous, then do it. Then I would say that that's a reasonable offer. But if it's not that bad, um, I don't know that I wanna take that long-term risk of uh, causing an adjacent level wear down, especially in someone so young. The longer you're gonna live with that adjacent level uh, risk, the, the more likely it is it's gonna happen. So I think um, you know that's, that's one option. The other option is actually really fairly new. And I'm, I'm always a little bit reluctant to recommend new things to young people because you gotta live with the impact of these things a long time. But I think you can also fall into a trap of if, you know, Freddie, every, like, I'm gonna, you're gonna go from 18 to 21 over the next three years. Those are big years, buddy. Those, that's like dog years. Every year is like six or seven years. I'm gonna go from 56 to 59 and who cares, right? Whether you're 56 or 57 or 58 or 50, does it really matter? 60 might be a big deal, I don't know. But it's, it's really irrelevant. I mean, a year is a year for me, but a year is seven years for you. You're developing, your life is changing. There's, there's, hopefully there's dynamic stuff going on. Your future is gonna be decided over these years. And do you wanna spend those critical years in pain? So on the one hand, with a young person like you, I feel like I don't wanna, I don't wanna expose you to a risk that we don't know what happens 20 years later. And so, and you're gonna live 20 years. But on the other hand, you gotta, sometimes you gotta really just pull the trigger and do something. And there's a long lead up to another treatment, which is a denervation of the disc. There's now a procedure where a needle can be placed that, de that denervates the sinovertebral uh, nerve, which goes into the disc. And um, this is done by pain management doctors. It is um, fairly new and it was in trial a couple years ago, but it is now approved and it's now available. I don't know if every insurance covers it, but certainly some of them do. And it's definitely worth asking about. Uh, Freddie wants to know what, well, okay, great. You give me a lot of information. What do I do now? Um, the answer is you need to speak to an expert. Discogenic low back pain due to an annular tear. Um, if you have that knife in the back pain that's right in the middle, worse when you're seated, worse when you bend forward, then you need to talk to a knowledgeable doctor. And that knowledgeable doctor is either a spine surgeon or a pain management doctor. It could be either. So if I lived in a town that only had pain management and no surgeon, I'd go see them, go see them. But on the whole, this is more a surgeon than a pain management doctor. So you wanna see a spine surgeon that could be either a neurosurgeon or an orthopedic surgeon. And the way to find that person is to look up minimally invasive, board certified person who operates in an ambulatory surgery center most of the time and is has high uh, rankings on their patient reviews on the web.